Alrighty. Here we are. Friday, February 3rd, wrapping up week two of the streaming schedule. Can hear me. I'm never going to make that mistake again. God, that was funny. If For those of you who don't know, a couple of days ago when I was on stream, like, you know, because what I usually do is I come on and I, I give like an intro and I talk, I give a little bit of a status update where I'm at and then I just kind of head off into it. And sometimes I talk, sometimes I don't. But I think it was on Wednesday stream when I started up. Uh, it, I uh, my microphone was was not quite working the way it should have been. So yeah, I actually just sat there and talked to no one, nothing for the course of like 10, 15 minutes. And I, my microphone is essentially like muted for like an hour. So I'm going to try to not make that mistake in the future. Um, so yeah, am I really, am I like crazy red to you guys? Huh. Double check it. I don't look too red. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? Who cares about what I look like? That's not what we're here for. I'm not here to look at me. We're here to uh, get shit done. So, game development, right? Yeah. Need some energy, as as per usual. Don't recommend the habit, but when you just keep popping stims like me to just get one step further, one step further, you know, it's 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 irrelevant. So, um, uh, so I am really excited about what I get to work on tonight. Really excited about tonight's stream because it is um. A unit that is, I've been looking forward to for quite a while now. Excited about it. And it's definitely, um, I'd say it's definitely like, uh, I'll tell you what, the music right now is perfect. Um, very Egyptian sounding. I will show you what we're going to be doing right now by pulling up the image. We are doing this guy. We are doing the Dominator, which is a full anthropomorphic um, Anubis like jackal creature who has like this sci fi Egyptian armor, layers of plate and LEDs and cybernetics and gems and, and floating pieces. And uh, it's just. In terms of like, I've done a couple of crazy humanoid, or sorry, I've done a couple of crazy like beast creatures, like the uh, griffin or the magma fin. But in terms of like more like humanoid characters, I would argue this is probably the most um, artistically or, or, artistic. Artistically, I'm not sure that's a word. Um, this will be the most challenging uh, character to date. The, the, do starting this tonight this will um, I'm gonna experiment because I'm hoping what I can do is I can kind of cheat and the the biggest concern for me is more or less you know from the knee up right it's it, it's just another humanoid I could maybe try to make the arms a little bit lankier but I'm not gonna go out of my way at the end of the day um, if they're more like standard human proportioned. Um, and then obviously the head is a little bit different, but I mean, really, what, what do you do? You just take a face, stretch it out, you add like a jaw bit, some ears, yeah, it's fine. The complicated bit is obviously the legs. The entire bone structure and movement from the knee down is quite different to that of, of a standard human. And so, uh, um, yeah, I'm I'm intimidated by by this by this task, um, but eager at the same time because because it will be a, because it is a challenge of my of my skills up until this point. That makes it all that much more exciting for me because it means that it's not just me going through the motions and grinding out another piece of art. It's like, oh, this is something that's really going to push me to my push my knowledge to its limit and I, and I appreciate the challenge especially if when you've been doing this as long as I have so so
so that's about it um we're i'll tell you this we are absolutely unequivocally 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 bully i'm going to use smaller words we are definitely not going to finish the uh painting for this character today i know we've been on a roll lately the, the streams this week like finishing like a character per stream i guarantee you that is not happening today there's absolutely no way in hell because i'm starting this character from scratch and it i've never done anything else like it and there's so many intricate details i would be honestly i'd be surprised if we made it halfway through painting this character so we're going to start with like the torso the shoulders the maybe the arms or something like that um god damn it he's dual wielding too he has like a you can't really see it in this image because this is just a concept but there we go he has this moon, like a sickle, a full sickle circle thing, and he has a cat of nine tails, so he's dual wielding. Um, so it's gonna be freaking <laughs> crazy. Um, but uh, I'm gonna try and essentially cheat and get away with putting this character on my standard humanoid skeleton, and then just kind of like adding a couple of new pieces and attachments to the legs in hopes that we can kind of just because if we can successfully do that we can simplify the animation process for this character times 10 because if we have to make a whole new skeleton just because of his slightly different anatomy um it means that we have to do redo you know like 40 plus animations to support the character so and so in the spirit of being an efficient game in a, a time efficient game developer uh we are going to try to make sure that this character stays within the confines of our already established standard humanoid uh character um but just kind of slightly pushes it in a couple of different directions with the proportions and obviously the legs being the big departure so you take some liberties with the legs but we should try to keep roughly everything else uh standard with the um what's been established already so let me open male anatomy base file and get it prepped and ready real quick this is the uh later. by the way um so we won't complete this character tonight um uh but obviously i'll just keep working on it all weekend uh and maybe um so depending on which means probably early next week you know monday um tuesday hopefully at the latest um i mean the animations are going to be complicated for this guy no matter what but i'm hoping if we 100 percent him you know we paint rig and animate him um get it all done by by uh you know like wednesday at the latest that means that for for this segment of my work schedule we have completed all of our tasks ahead of schedule 100 percent, which is great because i assigned myself even more things to do this this time around than i did in january um and we're i assigned myself even more and we're completing it even faster so that is just like that's how much momentum I'm built. I'm gaining on, on game development right now, uh, which is good. Uh, if anyone is curious what faction we are tackling next, because I'm doing roughly around four units per faction. Uh, you know, I'm sampling some of our, I think, most marketable and coolest looking factions. I I'm sampling like around four units per faction and then by the time August rolls around, I'll have a full trailer put together for you guys in 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 engine, in Unity, in game, with all the characters running around fighting each other and in big battles and whatnot. So you can get an idea of what this game is about than just watching me paint units for it all the time. Um, but uh, the next faction I'm doing after the Zanaris, because this guy's the last one, is uh, we're gonna do the Church of Dredanos next, which is your medieval european crusaders so l's to the yeah um that's gonna be cool and the first unit we're gonna do for them is the crusader which 
because I have my references pulled up, I'll just show you real quick. Crusader Janos is this guy right here. So yeah, he's very um obviously for anyone who's ever played World uh Warcraft, uh he takes a lot of inspiration from the paladins in that game. Uh, like the judgment armor and has a lot of those kind of color schemes. I think me pers I think he pushes it in a different direction. Um, it, I think it's different enough for sure. Um, but you know, to each his own. Um, and he'll have a, a two-handed sword that he can light on fire, and, and a book. Switch between like a an offensive stance, or he can one hand the sword and hold his book, and switch into like a healing, uh, protective stance. So. Yeah, but that's probably, you know, that's what we're going to be doing next week, most likely. Yeah. And, uh, this about does our little intro bit, I think. So let me finish, um, switching gears here. I have to be pulling, I have to be looking at a lot of anthropomorphic. <laughs> Um, reference images to make sure that I'm constantly keeping this in consideration as I'm working on on the character. So I really have to make sure that I nail the differences between between these two things. Yep. Anyways. Um, yeah, just it's gonna be boring. Just a minute. Let me finish kind of scattering my reference images around and preparing my preparing. Oh, sorry, preparing my workspace. I can, we can get started with the painting. Crazy. Oh, 
monitors. Ready. Sure. And all this is ready. color palette in here. Just, so I just F it, you know, just dive right in there. Chest? It's like two layers of Jeez Louise. God, I'm already looking at just the neck, chest, collar areas. It's an insane overlapping pile of mechanical cloth armor bits and pieces. It's 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 pretty pretty insane. This combo should be like I'm trying to think real quick about the animations, attack animations, because I'm gonna have his main hand be the sickle, his off hand be the um, cat of nine tails. It have like I know he has an ability called like lash or something, so he definitely has to have like some sort of specific like cat of nine tails lash. Um, that doesn't mean that the weapon can't be implemented in his attack chain as well. I think he could have like a. You could have like a, a down, up, double down. It's, it's an idea. I, I usually, when it comes to animation reference, I'll, I'll like go in like my garage or something. I'll set my phone and I'll just pick up some props, you know, foam swords or something, and I'll just record myself doing stuff. And then I'll review the footage. Sometimes turn it into like a GIF or something, or play it back in slow motion, and I'll I'll follow my beats and use that as an animation reference for when I do the, the game's combat animations. So, some pretty funny stuff. Um, if you could watch me do that, it's pretty funny. But I'm not ever going to show that, so... Whatever. Anyways. Okay. Um, well, there's only one way to do this, and that's just... Getting right the hell in. Um, I had a couple of these pieces. So that way they're out of my way. We're, we got a lot to do with this torso. So we're going to hide most everything. And I'll start with the... I mean, from what I'm looking at in the reference, there's almost four layers to the chest piece alone. He has the chest plate, the chest harness, the shoulder pads that go over that, and then a collar that goes on that. Oh, it's, no, sorry, five layers. And then the headpiece goes on top of that. That's five layers all coming in on top of this point right here, like right around the collarbone. It's like five layers nearly overlapping on that point. What did I? 
Oh God, I concepted this character um, a year ago, 2023. No, no, it's almost two years ago. You know what? Wait, the date is on the picture. Let's just look. 11, 5, 21. So just over a year ago. Four, what is that 14 months ish yeah i don't know um ow okay i kind of scoot this out of the way yeah sorry 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 for the sound okay just kind of get at it Obviously, like, ignore the weird human anatomy um, underneath. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's just helping me understand um, the sprite's relevancy to the standard humanoid model is, in fact, important. So we're going to paint over every last one of them. This character in particular, he's almost completely like mechanical, like completely armored from head to toe. In fact, the only opening is around the mouth. You can see it peeking through the helmet. The ears are open here, and there's a little bit of an open area right underneath the chin. Those are like the three spots on the entire character where you can see the slightest amount of skin. Other than that, he is 100% armored. I like to think that there's essentially kind of like some Iron Man tech going on here because they have like celestial magic and they use a combination of science and magic to um, create their kind of technology that the Xenaris use. They're arguably one of, if not the smartest races in the world. Probably only rivaled by the, um, the dwarves. Stonebeard dwarves in specific are, are very intelligent. You can see that uh, through their um, technological prowess. Pro prowess. I'm saying all sorts of weird words tonight, aren't I? It's prowess. I think it's prowess. Fairly confident, but, you know, call me an idiot if I'm wrong. the music up a little bit for you. I need some new additions to the color palette, I think, to support the LEDs that we're bringing in on this character that have not so far been present on the previous characters. Is here. There he is. 
is poking his head in. I'm your bad. You shake? Huh? Oh, thank you. You're so smart. So smart. You saw that, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's he's a cute boy. He's smart. Suffering from a little bit of a, a little bit of a leg injury right now. You just kind of like pulled a muscle or something, so a little bit more docile than usual. Also, every time I have a sneeze, I come in twos. So the second one is not going to come. Scratch that. We should listen to right now. But I think we can probably if we can get away with Warcraft music, then I think we can get away with this music. You know what music I think would be dope right now for this? Find out. This will do. Listen <laughs> into some StarCraft. That is very accurate to what we're doing. Like I said, like five layers overlapping over this chest, so I'm painting all this intricate detail in, even though odds are it's going to get covered up anyways. But in the, in the event that a piece moves, and so for a brief second you can see what's underneath, I want to make sure that that's the details there, so that way it's not like, um, doesn't like, all the parts that I skipped don't start throwing showing through. Besides, all it means is like, you know, another thing that you can do, for example, is in the future, if I ever want to like create more um, like unique skins for the character, for example, I wanted like an, uh, a variant of this character where he has like a more armored down look, I can take away a certain piece, like take off the helmet and any of the elements of the helmet, like the collar or the draping down parts, take all that away and his chest piece will, will already be done for me. I won't have to like paint new sprites for that, so. I don't know, it's probably a poor excuse. But if I had an art director or something, if I wasn't the art director, and if I was being led by a different one, they'd probably be like, stop, stop wasting time. But uh, I can't help it.
I want his armor to be nearly godlike. No scratches, no dings, no grit or wear and tear. Absolute, pristine, shiny, metallic, golden heaven. That is very much the intent of what needs to be done here.
questions. <laughs> Gotta experiment adding these on here. the way that looks. We go with the color dodge 70% though. That's pretty good. The way it looks. second. One more piece. Got the lighting pass ties everything together. I'm just going to go ahead and darken all around right off the gate. And that piece is covering this, so. Too harsh. Forty percent over. Just to, so I can visual help myself visualize it more. We're gonna do the mid next. I'm trying to for, focus the whole torso, but I, I I need to see the the, the character's full form come to fruition first, and I think that's gonna help me understand the torso and the collar and everything else that I'm doing. Actually, do you want him to have a slightly skinny waist? Not waist, but skinny midsection. Great. Sometimes the canvas breaks and I have to restart it. It's just something that happens for me. It's stupid and I hate it! Oh, 
don't swear. Uh, I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but I'm pretty sure, like, you cursing at all, having any curse words in, in a video, stream, whatever, like, immediately lowers the viewability of, of your video or whatever have you. Something to do with the algorithm. over the waist because there's actually going to be a belt that comes up to here but you need that extra bit underneath so when the character bends it doesn't like create an opening Warcraft 3 soundtrack on Spotify? Like, just out of curiosity. Wouldn't that be cool? Pretty sure it's only like the World of Warcraft soundtracks and whatnot, but. Damn, they gotta put that up. That'd be dope. Tragedy. I mean, I guess not, but pretty sure we could always um, play that off of YouTube if that's something we wanted to listen to. I have a strong feeling that the Warcraft 3 soundtrack is not something that we're going to get. I kind of want to hear this real quick. Uh, I think it's a recomposed um, I'm browsing music with you guys it's like rap or something I'm turning it off I'll be, I'll be annoyed and I'll turn it off better be a quality composition practically never be visible if I'm doing my job right. I don't like that. Furthermore, just making this easy on me.
Alright, I suppose. I support their uh, creative endeavors. However, I'd like to listen to something else. Not beautiful. In case you're curious, just because it is semi-relevant, I guess, um, my favorite race in StarCraft is Protoss. I am a Protoss main all the way. I'm great with all three races, um, but stylistically, gameplay-wise, just everything about him, Protoss has always been my favorite. I do play a mean Zerg, though. Darren is probably my least favorite. I mean, I like Terran, but I'll mass Marines Marauders any day, but MMM, is that even still meta anymore? It was back in the day, but no, nah. my life for ire all day, every day.
Oh damn man, listening to this uh, StarCraft music is making me want to flip and play the game. Ew! No gaming. Is he making one? Alright, it's not a realistic threat. That's uh my the the dopamine and incessant drive and desire to make this game overrides all other lesser feelings of wanting to play any. I don't know. Hogwarts Legacy is looking pretty cool. I have to wait for the reviews on that one. I mean, it looks cool, but, you know, so did Cyberpunk. track sounds very, um, very Stargate. some interlocking layered sheets of golden glory -ness. brighter section right here in the middle this is really all you'll see 90% of the time but you still paint that extra top and extra bottom just in case it peeks through for a moment the character is bending at a certain angle or something you know impact or something like that
Um, let's do the... Just keep working our way up the layers of this chest, I guess, so we'll do the harness next. Which strikes quite the resemblance. I wonder if I can save myself some time here. Just gonna go from scratch. <clears throat> There's too many differences. Dewey! That's alright. Whatever leads to the best product. That's the uh, most important thing in the world. So long as it doesn't take, you know. 12 years. <clears throat> Elder Scrolls 6. Huh? What? It wasn't me. I didn't say anything. Okay, so this harness is going to be meshed. It wraps around the uh, middle section. X like formation. Pretty much. Uh, that. This. To get the positioning right on this. all going to be hidden, so need to go any higher than that point right there. Back to me. Or by that point, it'll be covered by the... There's going to be another piece. Um, big kind of... <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. It'll be a big uh, like collar piece of some kind that's going to cover pretty much all of that. So... We don't need to bring it all the way around the shoulders. Which I suppose is contradicting the thing that I was talking about earlier with uh, doing too much of the chest piece or whatnot, but... I don't care. I'm the art lead. I can do whatever I want. The project lead, art director, whatever the hell I want. Who's going to call me out on it? Certainly not you, non-viewer. there's also some sort of um, uh, the harnesses are holding something on the side of the character like right there so it's uh, some sort of um,
sort of a piece like that. Damn. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is by far the most intricate, complicated character. I'm not saying it is definitively that of the entire game, any unit ever, but it is certainly, out of all the things I've done so far, like, most complicated and uh, intricate. Um, let's do okay, I can see why I did that. I yield do it the way that the concept asks me to do it. Definitely some Terran music right there. And now it's Zerg music. <laughs> it was Terran music for a moment. That is straight Zerg. having a nightmare. It's like twitching around in bed. Whatever. This is the point where maybe the micro detail on the concept is getting so small. I'm working with like pixels here, you know, so. In fact, some of the details here are literally so small that they're like, it'd be less than a pixel. So 
you have to go with more of a implied design as opposed to the actual thing. You can change it, just go with this kind of S thing that I did on the other unit. Keep a visual consistency going. Besides, this is something you can actually easily fit within a small pixel space. I think it looks pretty cool at a distance. That, that really is like the most important thing, is that these things hold up at a distance, because like in nearly no instance does is a character this big. Like we're obviously zoomed in, we're painting it, but you'll never see the unit this big in game. There's just no cause for it. There are small little RTS units that you only ever see at a, a great distance away. So, I mean, what you you think you you think you blow up a, a marine model in StarCraft II to to like a really big size? You think it's as detailed as the ones in the cutscene? No. Probably a couple of polygons and some color patches, and that's it. So if anything, I'm, I'm taking it farther than I should, but that's just because uh, I want the characters to be detailed enough to the point where you can zoom in and view their, their character at a higher fidelity if you want to. Let's hope it doesn't make my game run like crap at the end of the day, right? That sure would suck. We're going to aim for a solid 60 FPS. Make no promises. Okay, we have the shapes down. Color regions, paint it, and all the harness a day.
Photoshop, come back. Chilling home slice. Intentionally leave the overlay on that one a little bit stronger. Okay, the next piece is the part because I'm gonna shoulder pad. Essentially, I'm going to make this a, attach this to the this next piece of the chest, anyways. I will paint it on its own. to think about every move I make so 
hard. very complicated intertangling web of metal and pieces I have to not just try to accurately adapt the design present uh, but also have to try and make it I'm sure I'm doing it in a way in which it can be rigged and animated for gameplay purposes afterwards after the fact so it's a it's a lot. Like an Egyptian Iron Man, there's his arc reactor. <laughs>
uh, a roommate just got home, so my dog is going to want to go greet him. Yeah. Let him out real quick. Right back.
All right. All, all sorted. I mean, he's kind of... We've been, we've been spending what hour and 45 minutes constantly painting you guys have been my, my my babysitter right um you're watching and so you know I, so you know i've been painting the whole time and uh except for the past five minutes um and it does not change the fact that we are still working on things associated with the chest area there's a whole character to get through. But I would say already out of the gate, it's looking pretty cool. Um, so we've actually, that's more or less the chest. Now there's the shoulder pads, the head and all that. So god the head helmet has so many in fact i might end up simplifying it i just think that might be a bit too much for this let's go what i want to do next um let's do the arm it's on the arm right now we won't do the weapons, so I typically save the weapons slash hands for last, but let's do the shoulder, arm, top, uh, so it would be, so this, shoulder, arm, top, arm, bottom, that's what it's broken down into, FS, FAT, FAB, or fat, fab, <laughs> depending on, uh, yeah. No, no, no. That's... That's... Way too small. So what was it? There's some that sound soundtrack that's very weird. Kind of reminds me of um that ringing. Lots of weird sounds in the Zerg soundtrack. Kind of reminds me of that sound. It reminds me of uh John Carpenter's The Thing. Or if they took inspiration from that. I mean clearly like certain aspects of the the body horror part of the Zerg. Absolutely they took inspiration from that. Um. But I wouldn't give to 
tour the Blizzard campus and meet some of the minds behind StarCraft and Warcraft and Diablo and just ask them questions. I did meet Glenn Rain once. Uh, he's like my favorite artist ever. I met him and I was so starstruck and um, complete bafflement. Did I get a photo with him? I should have gotten a photo. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she took a photo. Well, I'm never getting it now. Um... Anyways, I met Glenn Ryan. Um, who, like, for example, he did the box art, uh, art, artwork for the Burning Crusade. So, that's, that's an easy, like, go-to off the top of my head. That's the Burning Crusade box art. Um, for World of Warcraft. And he, lots of StarCraft artwork, Warcraft artwork, Diablo artwork. He's just a great artist, and I love his, like, painterly style. His, his like, stylization in his artwork, the way that he draws people and renders his surfaces, and just his, everything about his style, to me, is, like, the definitive Blizzard style. Like, if you guys like Blizzard games, whether it's Overwatch or Warcraft or StarCraft or whatever, like, to me, I mean, there's plenty of great artists at Blizzard's at Blizzard, but Glenn Rain, looking through the concept art book, which I have all of the um, concept art books for World of Warcraft and and more, all up there with plenty of his artwork in those books. Um, his signature is on everything to me that is the most evocative of Blizzard style, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm personally not. Try, necessarily trying to imitate their style for my game. Um, there's certainly elements of it, but I don't think all in all I'm trying to replicate their style. I, I am going for something. Uh, if you know, if you, how do I do? How would I describe it as like I, uh, a my game is a, like a pretty slash realistic take on stylization. So the foundation is still stylization and still fantasy, but it's just taking that and pushing it slightly more in the realism direction in in, in the grit direction. Um, but it does start from a place of, of, of fantasy and stylization. I, I certainly am not trying to just go full cartoon with big shoulder pads and all, you know, the hyper over the top, you know, dialing it to 11 that Blizzard does. I'm not trying to do that. And I'm also not trying to make it gritty, photorealistic stuff all the time. Um, I like the combination of stylization and a painterly look along with um, semi more realistic proportions and detail and, and grit to my surfaces and whatnot. So.
sure I keep an eye on the dog. Just in case he's up to no good. Like he is. Hello, dog. Hey there. I cannot provide you snuggles at this moment in time, nor can I provide you playtime. I can, however, speak to you. That's about the only thing that I can give you. It's like, that's, that's not good enough. I'm gonna need a little more out of you, Dad. Um, here, I'll pet you with my other hand. He's underneath my, and he's trying to crawl his way up my chair and into my lap, which he is not going to be able to successfully pull off. Hi there. Oh, now he's kissing my hand, just begging for love and attention. You poor dog. It's not enough, huh? I thought you were injured. I thought you're crippled. Even if I gave you attention, like the only thing I want to be able to do for you right now is pet you. It's boring. Like not for me, it's not. I love the way it feels. Well, your dad's productive. He likes to get shit done. see his head just barely poking into frame right right there sitting here begging for love and attention I am denying him it is stream time
two hours in on our three hour long stream. Time really does fly when you're uh, having fun, eh? Been at it. Come say hi for one second. Come here. Oh, okay. Right. You can't really sit in my lap on this chair. Hi. Hi there. Hi. You're a big baby. I'm trying to flop over. And flop on his back, so I'll sit here and rub his tummy for the next two hours. No. No. Stay on my lap. You can't. I'm busy. Bye, bud. Love you. And they have some meaty gauntlets. The top of the arm first.
Told you guys we wouldn't even get close. Probably not even halfway. Right. It's just such a ankle. Such a crazy character, you know. Gonna take me a couple of days for sure on this one. It's a bit of a change of pace, because this week we've been so goddamn productive that we've just been going new unit, new unit, new unit, you know? Almost finished the this entire Denaris faction in one week. Word for this guy at the very end. Coming in and messing up my, my, my killing spree. Like, better idea. I'm going off, off design here. I like this idea more. I like the dots and then the connecting of the dots. It makes it look more like a constellation. They're heavily, the theme of their race is heavily based on like stars and star magic and shit because <clears throat> Stargate.
always okay to uh, break your your design if you have a better idea for it. Subscribe to the idea that I've, I've heard before. Um, don't get too attached to your ideas. Don't get too attached because sometimes you can fall in love with with a, like an initial idea or something so much that it can blind you from seeing the better one in front of you because you just get stuck in one place and you just you get too stubborn with your pride, your ego, passion, whatever. Something might be blinding you from seeing the better choice. Um, I think, for example, the other thing the other design I had for this arm pad, it worked. But I think what I've just done here is something a little bit more creative. I think it stands out quite a bit more. It was before it was just circles and then a straight line through them. That was it. Um, but this is like a unique pattern I think I just came up with. Um, and I think it looks very alien and ties into a celestial theme even more. So I'm, you know, it's honestly, it's just a tiny little brace on an arm. And that's all it is, right? So who cares? But all that stuff piles up to make a good, a good character design. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm biased. I, I can only ever see through my own lens, through my own point of view, but, um, who knows? Maybe one of these days, um, people will get to uh, see the stuff that I made and like either validate my journey, be like, wow, Corey, that looks really cool. Or they'll be like, that sucks, Corey, you're trash. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I mean, I'm okay with that because, you know, I did what I loved. And, you know, if, if in the event that they say that it does suck, I mean, I guess I'd say there's two things to take into consideration. A, first and foremost, before you actually try to take that into consideration, you need to look at who's saying it, why they're saying it. Um, is it someone who consumes a lot of art the way that you do? It's like, do they even have uh, a good um, basis of what quality is? to be able to critique it. So, for example, my go-to thing on this is, for me personally, I think Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. I think it's a masterpiece. And low-key, I think if you don't like Jurassic Park and you think it's an objectively bad movie, I think your taste in art as a person is not going to align with, with me to say it in the most politically correct, polite way I possibly can. I think if I were off camera, I'd say a hard word that a little bit more aggressively, but that's okay. I'm just passionate about Jurassic Park and how much I love that movie and all of the movies after it, exception to Jurassic Park 3. I have mixed feelings on that one, but I love all the Jurassic World movies, Jurassic Park movies, etc. Uh, but no, no. Um, yeah, I mean, if you just if you don't like Jurassic Park, I mean, do you even like art? <laughs> do you even like entertainment? Um, so that that would be the one thing to take into consideration. The other thing to take into consideration is, does that person have good intent? Maybe they're calling your stuff trash just, be, just to be inflammatory, um, in which case you should disregard that person just completely throw that shit out the window that person is not worth your time anyone who has a negative or ill intent should not be you shouldn't entertain their thoughts at all because you know the the source is corrupt uh they are a destructive toxic person therefore any criticism aimed at you is not under it's not being aimed at anything productive, like trying to help you get better or improve your artwork, which is what we should all be trying to do is, is, is improve 
as artists or, or creators, um, they're not trying to help you. They're just trying to hurt you because of some insecurity that they have deep down inside of them. So disregard that person. You should absolutely be willing to accept criticism from people who have good intent and are consumers or creators of art themselves. That's what, that's what I would say. Those are the people that you should be listening to if you're searching for criticism or trying to figure out how to get better. Find, um, so they don't have to create art like you, but they have to consume it. Like, for example, um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not just going to pull some random person off the street um, to ask to play like the Conquest of Eldenar beta and give me constructive feedback when he's like, I don't know, a log farmer or something, a, a dog trainer or something, right? It, it, the person's never touched a game in their life. It's like, how much, how valuable is their feedback really? It's not like your target audience and you should be trying to get feedback from your target audience if you want to improve because at the end of the day that's going to be the consumer of your product um and so you should be tailoring your product to meet their needs um that should be your goal um and then honestly just you know a measure of character like are they a good person because a good person is going to be more genuine and mean what they say and if they care about you then they're gonna try to um, help you by giving the best feedback they possibly can that is the kind of those are the kind of people that you shouldn't be like you know let's say you, you have friends or something and in, in this instance if you have friends and they play video games and they care about your intent you should be listening to those people's feedback on 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 your um, art or programming or game development or whatever it may be, because you know those people are going to give you the the best possible um, outside lens looking back in my mini uh, game development rant about uh, artistic feedback and criticism and all that. Now, don't be afraid. I guess would be the other thing I would say of, of criticism. You should embrace it. You should chase criticism. In fact, it's much worse if they're just like, ah, it looks perfect. It's like, well, that's not very helpful. If everything I make is just perfect all the time, then there's, <laughs> there's nowhere to go but down, right? If everything you do is perfect, there's nowhere to go but down. So if anything you want, you're, you're to have um, flawed creations because it gives you something to strive for, to be better. Um, life sure would be a boring place if, you know, it'd be like in Skyrim, like just take away the progression. It's like, is it really as fun if you just start out at, I don't know, level 100 or something? every single perk tree is maxed. I mean, sure, it's going to be fun for a few minutes running around just obliterating everybody. But after that, it's like, what's really the point in playing anymore? If 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 you just are automatically a complete master at everything, it's like it doesn't give you much to strive for now, does it? That's the you know, that's a I think that's a perfect metaphor used for real life. I mean, that's that's why you want criticism because with criticism it's essentially like to think of criticism as like we're going to keep going with the sky metaphor criticism is is the wolf or whatever that you can kill to get experience to level up right i'm not saying kill people who criticize you <laughs> i'm not saying that but what i am saying is is um it's, it's through that uh process of hearing criticism, absorbing it, learning from it, and making improvements, that's how you level up your, your skill, your creative ability. So if you're close to criticism, even from the start, man, like you're never going to grow. You're never going to improve.
you have no idea what you're capable of, what truly what you're capable of in your lifetime. You know, you could climb to some extremely high peaks. You don't even know the half of it. Um, who, who knows what your limitations are? Um, but if you push yourself, you keep doing that that criticism process and that development process or whatever. Um, and you keep doing that like your whole life, like, oh my god. Imagine where you could be not only a year from now, but like 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Like that that that's that scares me. I don't I don't think I have <laughs> for all the stuff that I'm creating right here, I don't think I have the imagination to comprehend like what I can be 20 years from now if I keep at at it keep at what I'm doing right now if I keep at this for 20 more years sure I could be um could still be a nobody and uh, have no money no fame no success um but uh I think because sometimes maybe at the end of the day might some some elements of, of your life story might come down to luck or being in the right place at the right time or being born into the right family or whatever like that's true that you know young money old money etc but uh i think um i think objectively it's an undeniable unavoidable fact that living in a constant state of self-improvement and self-development um will inevitably yield some sort of higher form or higher state of, of being for yourself regardless of it if, if you're you get exactly what you want i guarantee you 20 years of self-improvement you're going to be something more than you are right now and whatever that thing is it's better it's a better version of yourself so that. Damn, that arm piece looks pretty darn dope, am I right? That. Alright, we're making some progress, eh? Going to um we have 30 minutes left i need to go um start take like a five minute break and uh prep some food stuff for dinner because i am getting pretty hungry so i'm gonna time my food stuff so it's all ready to eat the second my stream is over at 11. So give me like just two minutes i'll be right back
Alright. I'll have to leave in 10 more minutes. All minutes. But, uh... Yeah. Give us enough time to get started on this, uh... Really, visually, the gauntlets on these guys, yeah, for sure.
about this is. So. <coughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> Got 17 minutes left. hate it when you're painting on the wrong layer. Darn me. I do it all the time. hope every artist does, so it's not just me who's the jackass. Shoot, right back. 
the end of the oven real quick. In fact, I'm not even gonna turn off the visuals because I'm gonna be back that quick. webcam is totally like what is that like 10 15 frames a second i mean look at that like oh god to finish up this gauntlet right here after this gauntlet is finished that's gonna be it for tonight's stream yeah we're absolutely not able to get um a whole lot quantity for the sprites um not able to get a vast quantity of sprites done tonight however i would argue that ones that we do are some of the highest quality, best designed, most interesting looking sprites we have created so far for any unit in this entire game. I have a full concept I'm working off of for this image uh, with a unique alien design and um firing on all cylinders right now. Uh, let me think about my weekend. Odds are I will be close, if not definitely done, I think, with this unit's painting process, the texturing process. I'll be close. I'll, I'll, by, by next stream, I'll either be 100% finished or like 90, like 80% worst case scenario. But even then, I find that unlikely because I'm going to work on this after work tomorrow, all day Saturday night. And um, 
all day Sunday. So, uh, that many hours put into it, I think we should be, should be good. Which means, so starting next week on Monday, stream-wise, um, we'll probably begin with the, uh, uh, the rigging process, um, which I am very interested in seeing how that goes because, again, we have this whole anthropomorphic legs and new weapon types and uh, head with all these new pieces on it, like ears and snout and all this stuff. So there's just... This character is bringing a lot of new stuff to the table for our humanoid rig. Um, because originally the plan was to just have any of the anthropomorphic characters occupy their own rig, but upon further contemplation and examination and improvement of my skills, I've decided to try and make it work on the humanoid rig, because I think I could pull it off. It would probably save a lot of time the end of the day, which is an important project with uh, a, a content workload as heavy as this one is. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy for me. But as I said in my little tangent at the beginning, you know, I, I love the, the challenge. Um, because while it might be difficult to get through what I'm doing right now and to be able to, to do this, all that means is when it's done at the very end, I just get to stand on that hill and be like, yes, I slayed that dragon. Me, no one else. That's, that's an awesome feeling. I'm chasing it. Back is killing me. I've been sitting in my uh my, my straight back chair to the thing today. My kneeling chair. Um working on my posture. I don't wanna be slouching on the ground every time I I mean I'm I'm about I'm gonna switch back to slouching and being in my floor chair after this stream is over. But reducing that here and there is probably a good idea. making weird sounds.
almost done. Get the glow and then the lighting pass and then we are done so yeah just a few more minutes what i have left me maximum of four minutes okay i better hurry it up well guys um Thank you for the time to view this uh, whole stream we had going on today. And it's Friday, people are busy, so having a fun night, I, I imagine. Um, this has been quite the journey working on this unit, and we've only just begun. Many more hours are going to need to be invested into this or it's complete but when it is i can't wait to share it with you i'd like to remind you that um in terms of uh following like previews information updates stream notifications behind the scenes content i mean really the absolute best place to be in terms of following this game and staying and keeping up to date is the discord that is absolutely the number one location. I want to try and get as many people there as possible and make that kind of like the central hub. Um, I think it's just an absolute great platform um, in every way. So, yeah. Um, wrapping this up. Saying my goodbyes. I, I like that this week we essentially discovered uh, some of our um, copyright flaws and hopefully won't run into any more of those issues. Pretty much um, stick to video game music and I should be good. Anything outside of that, I'm going to get uh, <laughs> get attacked for. So. It's a gauntlet. It's 
This is what we got so far on our unit. Uh, Egyptian armored badass. So that's a rat. Yeah, that'll pretty much do it for me. Thank you guys for uh, watching. And I will see you guys on Monday at 6. Although, one of the days next week, I have a, a business meeting to attend to Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. So one of those days, the stream is going to start late. No, best place would be the Discord, which is where I will up update people on that. So, anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Have yourselves a good Friday night, and have yourselves a great weekend. Deuces.